Hey guys, Jose here with another video on exterior lighting using Arnold. In this specific example, we're going to see how we can create a nighttime shot using uh, many of Arnold's different uh, light types. So let's go ahead and jump right in. The first thing I'm going to do is add an environment a map to my environment slot. In this case here, it's a nighttime environment map of a starry sky. We bring that in. When we render, you see that it's correctly mapped to the background, but it is a little bit too bright for a nighttime, uh, nighttime uh, sky. So let's go ahead and adjust that by taking our environment map and bring it into the slate editor. And we're going to make some adjustments in here. I'm going to connect it to an Arnold color correct node. And then I'm going to take this shader tree and connect it all back into my environment slot so that any changes I make in slate will be reflected in the active shade window. So from here, the first thing I like to do is adjust my exposure, making it feel much more like an actual nighttime sky. Uh, but of course, by doing so, the overall illumination of my scene has been reduced because the only source of illumination is uh, that background image. But of course, we're going to address that by adding in some artificial lights. And then the next thing I like to do, because I don't actually like uh, the trees that are found in this image, or I find them a little bit too high, what I can do is adjust uh, my offset here on my V value, bringing it all back down a little bit. All right, let's deal with the lampposts. Let's go ahead and select those lampposts, isolate them, and add in some lights to them. So the first thing I'm going to do is add an Arnold light, set it to point, uh, align it to my lamppost, and uh, position it correctly. Now, you may be tempted to use a spotlight, which is a really good workflow and very valid as well. The only problem I had with this particular example with a spotlight is that the spotlights really illuminate downwards. They don't, they don't illuminate in all directions. The point lights illuminate in all directions. So they're going to give the impression of an actual real city kind of behind uh, this building, which we don't actually have in this scene. Other sources of illumination, other layers of illumination are going to sort of feel like that's what's happening in the scene. Um, so let's go ahead and just keep going with this, align our lights to the lampposts. I can adjust things like the color, making it a little bit more yellow, which is a little bit more realistic. We can adjust the intensities. We're going to bring this way up because uh, uh, that's the values we need to use. Um, and we can adjust, of course, things like exposure. Once I've created a whole bunch of copies of these lights, instances is what I like to use so that when I adjust one, everything comes for the ride as well. Uh, align them all to our lampposts. We can bring the rest of our scene back and see what's happening here in the render. Now you see that all of a sudden I have a little bit more illumination coming in and it feels a little bit more coming to, like it's coming to life. I can of course adjust, uh, keep adjusting these values and these properties on this light. And I always like to work in active shade because everything that I change on the lights, I immediately get that feedback in active shade. So I know exactly where I'm going at all times. I don't always have to wait for a final render. So let's go ahead and select these other lights that I have in my scene here. These are, these are other Arnold lights that are just hidden right now, and I'm going to unhide them. They're part of the sort of lobby entrance of this building. And just to show you that they're set to photometric, Arnold does support photometric lights, um, and they are loading this IES profile on disk right now. Uh, you can load in any IES profile you want. And let's go ahead and just enable them so we see how they are affecting the render. So we get that nice kind of profile lighting coming in from that uh, IS file. And of course, I can do things like adjust the color, the intensity, and the exposure. Next thing I'm going to do is add some lighting to the inside of the building. Now, the, the exterior is being lit by the, you know, the photometric lights and the, uh, the lampposts. Uh, but the building itself is not providing any illumination. And that doesn't feel very natural. Most office buildings you know, at night, are always, they're always, they always have some lights open. Uh, so lots of different ways of doing this. What I'm going to show you is uh, a technique using mesh lighting. So instead of creating individual lights inside of the building, I want to have a little bit more control of what's happening with these lights. So what I did instead is I created a bunch of these little cylinders that are floating around in space. Every cylinder is uh, inside of each of these rooms, right closer to the sort of exterior facade. And I collapsed them all into one mesh, or I attached them all rather into one single editable mesh. Um, so you see here I have one object, and these are all elements of this one object. The reason why I'm doing this is because uh, we are going to uh, use this a little bit later down the road in this tutorial for a little bit more procedural work workflow. So what I'm going to do is create an Arnold light and set it to mesh, and then we're going to assign that geometry as my mesh light. When I bring it all back and render, 
you see that we have nothing. We have nothing because the properties are a little bit too low, so we can increase these values to start uh, getting that, uh, that, that uh, lighting coming through. Now you notice that as I adjust the intensity and the exposure, I'm getting the light to come through, but it's super grainy right now. And the reason is because my samples on my light are really too low. So if I increase them up to 16, which is the maximum, and then go back and adjust my intensity and my exposure to something that makes a bit more sense, it's starting to look really, really nice. So now we're getting that light coming in from the inside of the building, projecting outwards. Uh, the next tool I want to make sure you guys are aware of, I mean, it's nothing new, but it's been around, it's been around for quite, a, quite some time, is a light lister. But it is a really great way to have a global sense of what's happening in your scene. Uh, so, and, you know, by using instances, it really helps uh, sort of uh, make this workflow a little bit more efficient. So only one copy of the instance of, and any group of instances is listed here. So you can do things like turn lights on and off. You can adjust the intensity, uh, you know, right from here, from all of your lights, the exposure, even the color. Uh, and do all those modifications from one within one sort of light panel. So really great tool for adjusting and balancing your light out in your scene. All right, so the next uh, step here is, uh, so this is nice, we have lights coming in from the building, but what if we want to take a little bit further? All of these little tubes that we see here are producing the same amount of illumination or the same colored illumination, which is not really nice or not really natural or realistic. I want to add a little bit more kind of depth to this, a little bit more layered feeling. So to do that, I'm actually going to use um, an OSL technique in Max that we're going to look at in a second. But the first thing I need to do is to separate all of these tubes out into different material IDs. Um, so each of these tubes has, uh, uh, you know, is all set to the same material ID, which is one. Um, and to randomize the material ID assignment to each of these tubes, I'm going to use a script that I found on ScriptSpot uh, that allows me to do that. So material ID by element, we're going to go ahead and download this script and um, launch it up into Max when I run the script. This tool allows me to basically randomize between two different values. In this case, I'm going to go from one to six. I don't want to get too, I don't want to have too many values because then it gets a little bit hard to manage. And we're going to be randomizing by element because these are all elements of an object. And we're going to run it through uh, the tool, go random. And now you see that when I select elements here, they all have a different material ID, ranging from one to six. Right, so this is going to allow us to take this information and feed it into an OSL shader tree to then randomize the actual coloring of these lights or the intensities of these lights. So let's go ahead and see how we can use this in, uh, in OSL. First thing we're going to go ahead and do, of course, is render it out. There we go. And in OSL or in my uh, slate editor, I'm going to look for an OSL node called material ID. This is going to allow us to extract material ID information from our object that this is applied to. We're going to grab a one of 10 um, also OSL shader, and we're going to use the index that is extracted uh, from the material ID node, which is basically the one to six uh, material IDs that we have on our, on our actual elements. And we're going to use this as an input for our OSL one of 10 shader. And I'm going to make sure that I have the right range of inputs. I, you know, I have up to 10 that I can use in this shader, but I only want to use uh, six. And then we're going to take this and we're going to assign it to our Arnold mesh light. So rather than using the yellow color that we have there, we're going to be using a texture map, uh, which is going to be this OSL shader, OSL shader tree. Now, all of a sudden, you see that the illumination is uh, ranging between the colors that I've defined here. So I can go a little bit crazy and a little bit funky with some hot pinks and some hot blues, but you guys get what's happening here. I'm basically assigning, uh, you know, a different a color illumination based on that random material ID that that script created and leveraging that data in OSL. And then the last thing I like to do, of course, is just take my uh, camera and adjust the overall exposure to bring everything down a little bit and make everything feel a little bit more like a nighttime shot. Let's go ahead and let this guy refine so you guys see what's happening here. So really nice workflow for proceduralism. Now, I use that OSL tree to randomize the colors of the lights inside of the buildings. But what if you wanted to just use it as a light switch or a dimmer, so to speak? You can also do that if you set your inputs to just being ranges of black to white or anything in between grays and stuff. So everything that will be black will be off. Everything that will be white will be fully illuminated. 
and then you know everything in between will be a dimmed light. So we could basically use this OSL shader tree that I just showed you, or this technique to basically create a light switch box or a light panel box uh, to control uh, the lighting that way. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed.